Centuries from now, after a period of conflict that threatened to cast the Earth back into barbarism, mankind finally set aside its differences and united under the authority of a single world government. After expanding into space and colonizing dozens of star systems across the galaxy, Earth now presides as the capital of the, well, take your pick, the Terran Federation, the United Earth Directorate, the United Nations of Earth, you have plenty of names to choose from. But does it even matter what it's called? Well, yes. Yes, it does. When it comes to naming a country, there are no formal guidelines or rules you need to follow. But in science fiction, words like republic, empire, federation, and others are often used interchangeably without regard for their inferred meaning. In other cases, attempting to differentiate various countries either within the same universe or against other popular science fiction settings, nations will be given names that are overly convoluted or just make no sense. In this episode of Incoming, we're going to look at some of the most popular choices for naming an interstellar civilization and include some examples of what works and what doesn't. But before we begin, I'd like to make a few things clear. The first is that for the most part, I'll be focusing on human nations that originate on Earth. The reason for this is that alien societies aren't bound by any human definitions or concepts, and without that, you can rationalize basically any name or style of government you like. The second thing is that, as I mentioned before, there are no set rules on how to name a country and the definitions of specific terms can be nebulous at best. This video is mostly just my own opinions on what is most logical and believable and shouldn't be viewed as a masterclass on political science. Now, a nation's name is almost always influenced by its style of government. So that's where we're gonna start, beginning with republics. In the modern era, republics are the most common form of government, and the word republic is used in the official name of three quarters of the world's nations. Part of this is because the term has a very broad meaning. Its origins lie in describing any state without a monarchy and no hereditary aristocracy. Generally, a republic implies some form of democracy or control of the government by the people, but that's not always true. And in some cases, a nation might claim to be a republic purely for show, rather than for the actual ability of its citizens to choose their own leaders. Basically, the only firm rule is that if your country is not governed by a monarch, you can name it a republic which is why I have a problem with the Centauri Republic. The term Republic is so imprecise and can represent almost any style of government that it's hard to defend its use in the one nation in Babylon 5 ruled by an emperor. Now, I get the feeling that a lot of writers find the term Republic kinda boring and they wanna add something onto it. That's not unreasonable. Plenty of nations in our own world have done the same thing. You can have a socialist or people's republic if your nation is communist, although capitalist examples also exist. There are Islamic republics, which are a sort of compromise between a purely Islamic caliphate and a more secular republic. There is also federal republics, which exist as a federation of states under a republican form of government. But if you'd like to make it very clear that your nation is governed by the people, regardless of whether or not that's actually the case, you might use the term democratic republic, or even democratic people's republic if you want to go all out. While those are just the major examples, plenty more styles of republic exist. Parliamentary, unitary, constitutional, the list goes on. In most cases though, these would be used in academic circles to describe a style of republic, rather than being included within the official name. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but my guess is that most nations have decided that their parliament or constitution doesn't need special inclusion in the name of the country, or in the case of a unitary republic, it's just kind of redundant. So that leads me to the Martian Congressional Republic. From the name alone, it seems like the Martian government follows the parliamentary system, whereby the executive branch is accountable to the legislature, which in this case would be the Martian Congress. While this style of government makes sense to me, I'm not sure the name does. What is so important about the Martian Congress that they need to be immortalized in the official name of the country? I'm gonna let this one go though, because the expanse takes place far enough in the future to allow for some sort of political or societal shift. Off the record though, I'm pretty sure the authors just thought they needed to spice up the word republic a bit, and threw in congressional because it sounded kind of futuristic. I haven't finished all the books though, so if this is perfectly explained somewhere, please leave an angry comment below. So that about covers republics, but the final point I need to make is, just because a country fits the definition of a republic, it doesn't need to have republic in its name. Which brings us to commonwealths. Commonwealths are easy, because its meaning is even more nebulous than a republic. In the purest sense, a commonwealth is anything founded for the common good, or commonwealth. This describes pretty much every nation in history. 
Perhaps it's because the term is so generic, or because it's now so closely linked with the British Commonwealth, only a few modern nations include Commonwealth in their formal name. It still seems a perfectly reasonable name to use though, so I have nothing against the system's Commonwealth from Andromeda. Well, actually I do, but not with the Commonwealth part, and we'll cover that later. So next we have federations, also known as federal states, or as previously mentioned, federal republics. These are a union of partially self-governing territories, which have been granted some level of authority by a federal government. The United Federation of Planets is a perfect example of this. All member worlds are represented on the Federation Council, and have some level of autonomy, but are ultimately subject to the power of the Federation President on certain issues. A terrible example would be the Trade Federation, which makes no sense whatsoever. Why a corporate conglomerate would call itself a Trade Federation is beyond me, especially when its leader is a Viceroy, which implies some sort of monarchy. Maybe things work differently in the Star Wars universe, but in ours, this makes no sense. From federations, we move on to confederations. As you might expect, confederations and federations are pretty similar, but the distinction is generally that a confederation is a union of sovereign states brought together for a specific purpose, typically an external threat. Unlike most federations, membership within a confederation is voluntary, and states within it can relinquish their membership. This means that the federal authority of a confederacy is comparatively weak. As with all these terms, however, the exact nature of a confederacy can vary from a loose association of states to those with a strong central government, resembling a federal system. I'll give the Confederacy of Independent Systems some credit here. Their name perfectly fits their style of government and their opposition to the Galactic Republic. I should also make a quick mention of the term League, which can be used interchangeably with confederation, although it's likely even more decentralized. If your nation is supposed to have a tyrannical central government, maybe don't call it a league. So that brings us to maybe the most popular and overused term in fiction, empires. An empire is generally defined as a collection of nations or people brought together through force or the threat of force and ruled over by an emperor or some type of powerful sovereign. My problem with empires in science fiction is that this style of government is ineffective and outdated and it seems highly unlikely that any state ruled in this manner could survive for long enough to develop interstellar travel before falling apart to internal unrest. If this empire is ruled by a hereditary monarch, the situation is even worse, because there is absolutely nothing to prevent inadequate leadership on every level. It can be interesting to see medieval-style feudalism brought into a science fiction setting, but if you're going for even the semblance of realism, any government functioning in this manner would be almost thoroughly incompetent. A nation run on a merit-based system, in which individuals can obtain power regardless of their birthright, will always be better organized and likely more advanced culturally, scientifically, economically, and militarily than an empire which rewards those being born to the right family. As an added bonus unique to empires, whenever the sovereign dies without an appointed heir, the empire gets thrown into crisis. There is a reason why almost no monarchy survived the 20th century without becoming largely ceremonial. Unless Earth underwent some sort of terrible apocalypse and society had to be completely rebuilt, a futuristic human government should never be referred to officially as an empire. The term, especially in the modern era, is incredibly anachronistic and almost always used as a pejorative. It's for this latter reason that empires are almost always reserved for the bad guy faction, regardless of their political system. Case in point, the Helgen Empire is a fascist authoritarian state that should have been given a more accurate name. It's not really an empire. Republic, Commonwealth, Federation, Confederation, Empires, these cover basically every type of government you could conceivably include in the name of your nation. Often though, writers use other terms that don't really fit or just don't make sense with varying success. Let's start with one of the more popular examples of this, Alliance. The problem with using Alliance as the formal name of a government is that the basic definition of the word doesn't really work in that context, and its implied meaning is much better conveyed by Federation or Federal Republic. There's just no real reason to use the term alliance when you have other words that can more accurately describe a system of government. The only example where I think alliance was used somewhat realistically was in Firefly. The anglo sino alliance is only the colloquial name for the Union of Allied Planets, which, while not perfect, makes a bit more sense within the context of the world. Even modern military alliances rarely include alliance in the name, so even if the future world government evolved out of some great alliance, they'd probably just change the name at some point. The same goes for coalition, which is just another word for alliance. I can accept it as the name of a group of states, but not as a single united nation. So moving onwards, 
One of the easiest terms to misuse is protectorate. A protectorate is a dependent territory that has been granted some level of autonomy from a greater sovereign state. The Vol Protectorate from Mass Effect uses this term correctly, as they are a client species under the Turians. The Kvithian Protectorate from Beyond Earth, by contrast, is not by definition a protectorate. Next on my list of terms that shouldn't be used is hegemony. This is a term used to describe a state which enjoys a position of predominance over all others. While this can be used to describe a nation, for that nation to include it within their formal name is almost comically belligerent. That pretty much describes the Batarians though, so I can forgive them for using it. Moving on to unions. I don't actually have a problem with this one, and it would most likely be used as a substitute for federation or confederation. It also just sounds cool. While the term union seems to be somewhat affiliated with authoritarianism, probably because of the Soviet Union, I think it works in any capacity, such as the fascist Cardassian Union or the democratic planetary union. You can take your pick. Now last on my list of government terms is the very simple state. This is a boring but perfectly reasonable option. I mean, if you can't think of anything better. Okay, so now we move on to the second part of our nation's name. If, for example, we are a confederation, what are we the confederation of? For alien civilizations, this is easy. Just insert the name of your race or some other weird alien word. For a future version of humanity, though, it's an interesting question. The easy answer here might be just Earth, as in the Confederation of Earth. The problem with this is that if this nation is a true interstellar civilization with various colonies spread across multiple star systems, using Earth in the name represents only a portion of your citizenry. The United States, after all, isn't the United States of Washington, D.C. So what about naming it after some element of interstellar geography? The United Federation of Planets, or the Systems Alliance? Well, naming a nation after planets or star systems doesn't make a lot of sense either. Nations on Earth aren't called the Federation of Lakes or the Republic of Mountains, and in the case of the United Federation of Planets, Andoria is a moon. A trivial point, maybe, but, but still. I think what's needed in this case is a word that represents all of humanity, but isn't tied to a specific place, nation, or even planetary body. Mankind and human don't really work in this context, and I think sound kinda goofy. The best candidate, in my opinion, is Terran. I think the major reason not to use Terran is that it's become so associated with science fiction that to use it in the real world, it just seems a bit of a joke. But I think it has a few points in its favor. As a Latin word, it's part of a language that's already become something of an international standard, and most importantly, it just sounds cool. And isn't that the most important factor? So with that in mind, I'd like to mention a few interstellar civilizations with truly cool and unique names, as well as those with just awful ones. First up on my best of list is the United Nations Space Command. This is a great example of how to get around the limited number of government types and have something unique and distinct. It's a bit of a cheat, as the UNSC is an emergency military government rather than a true sovereign state, but it works perfectly well in the context of the Halo universe and the constant war against the Covenant. I do have to mention, though, that the original civilian state, known as the United Earth Government, that's just an incredibly bland name. Next up is the Imperium of Man. After all my complaints about how you should never name your government an empire, it might seem hypocritical of me to include Imperium, which is essentially the same thing. The Imperium works here, however, because not only does it evoke the Roman stylings that the Imperium is largely based on, but it also serves to underscore how human words and concepts have drifted and changed across the millennia to become more acceptable or find new meaning. The Turian hierarchy is maybe one of the most successful examples of creating a new type of government in science fiction. Calling a human nation a hierarchy would come across as a bit forced, but in the case of the Turians, it's great and accurately represents their society and government. Last on the best of list is the United Colonies of Cobol. Once again, this is a name that only works because of the immense amount of backstory and context that is given to the origins of humanity in Battlestar Galactica. In other uses, the word colony might come across as being submissive to some foreign state, but here it serves as a reminder of humanity's long lost homeland. Now let's move on to names that just don't work. The Settlement Defense Front from Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Now, this is what you'd call a group of terrorists or some sort of small militia group. It evokes imagery of ragtag partisans rather than the formidable fascist state it's intended to be. This is doubly annoying because the Settlement Defense Front is described as being highly nationalistic but lacks any sort of credible national identity. The Galactic Federation of Free Alliances from Star Wars Legends is perhaps the worst name ever given to an interstellar nation. A federation of alliances makes no sense, and if you have the need to include free in the name of your country, you're probably overcompensating. 
the United Empire of Earth. What's strange about Star Citizen is that you can clearly see all the effort put into making the technology, ships, and specific aspects of the world building realistic. But the overarching political storyline comes across as kind of clueless. Originally formed as the United Nations of Earth, a significant percentage of the population on the colonies was apparently dissatisfied with the lack of representation and the government was renamed the United Planets of Earth, which ironically does very little to represent the people other than those on Earth. Later, a megalomaniac decided to create the United Empire of Earth and started using terminology from the Roman Empire. Not only is this completely ridiculous, but to think that the same technologically advanced, educated, and politically literate population that seemed to have such a problem with the United Nations of Earth would be okay with any of this recent developments are laughable. Stranger still is why the United Empire of Earth wasn't renamed after revolution restored democratic rule. This is perhaps the best example of a government whose name is completely out of sync with its character. Next is anything with a specific reference to space in it. Star kingdoms, star empires, united space nations. Whatever the use, I find it highly dubious that a nation would decide to rename itself just because they made it into space. And lastly, what kind of video would this be if I didn't make fun of something that our pal Space Doc really enjoys? The Alliance of Awakened Nations from Battlezone 2 is just a terrible name. Apparently they're called that because Earth nations have become aware or awakened to the reality of some alien space minerals. Even ignoring the use of alliance here, awakened nations is such a strange way to describe various countries who have decided to work together. Can a country be denied entry into the alliance for not being woke? This to me is emblematic of a greater problem. All too often, the distinction between a military alliance and sovereign state becomes kind of muddled. The alliance of awakened nations is just one example among many of governments that don't meet the requirements of an actual sovereign state. So now that I've criticized plenty of names, can I do any better? What would I name an interstellar human government? Well, there are plenty of valid answers, so instead I'll think I'll go with the most believable one, at least to me. A federation, I think, is the most likely choice for a future government system. Even if the Earth is united under a central authority, I still think various nations will continue to exist and exert some level of influence. And while I do like the sound of Terran, I just think it's too associated with science fiction to ever really be a realistic option. So my choice would be the United Federation of Nations. It infers a sort of lineage to the United Nations and avoids many of the pitfalls I mentioned earlier. So that's my choice and that just about does it. If you take away any sort of moral or lesson from this video, it should be that when coming up with such a fundamental aspect of a country's national identity, words should not be chosen arbitrarily. If a federation functions more along the lines of a unitary republic, that's okay, but there should be some sort of context or explanation for how this shift occurred. If an advanced civilization is governed by a hereditary monarchy, there should be some sort of realistic or at least plausible explanation for how such an archaic form of government has come back into use and why it just doesn't immediately fall apart when applied to modern economics and society. Thank you all for watching, and as always, we'd like to hear your thoughts. What's a good name for a spacefaring empire? Is the United Federation of Nations a terrible name? Is the United Empire of Earth actually brilliant? The answer to both of these is no, but feel free to try to convince me. The Templin Institute investigates nations, organizations, and factions from alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Do you have a suggestion for a future episode? Let us know by leaving a comment.